or said a word since we found her. Are you all right? I'm PC O'Connell. Miss? I think we need to get her to a hospital. Okay. Bad bargain. See if you can get a translator in here. We're going to find someone for you to talk to, all right? Bitch. What? Bitch trying to kill me. This is where it started. The victim sprang out of bed and fled down the stairs, managing to set fire to everything that he touched on the way, before finally ending up in a quivering heap on the front lawn outside. Right, so some suburban git falls asleep watching telly and gives himself 500 degree sunburn. Case solved. Can I go now? Well, that's what I thought at first, but uh, look again. Not exactly flash clean, is it? Where's the wife? I'll be back in a minute. You could use this. Bet they're a handful. Boys are always the hardest. My name's James. Can you tell me yours? It's okay. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. Kiddo. Sorry? My name... Kiddo. Kiddo. What happened? Say something. What happened? What happened? Kiranjit. What's wrong with her? Is she hurt? Who are you? Mother-in-law, who are you? Kiranji Alawalia. Mrs. Alawalia. I'm Detective Sergeant Myers. I need you to come with me. Detective Mrs. Sergeant. Alawalia, please. Kiran? And then what's going on? Taking her? <laughs> hey, mommy. Do you uh face out a drink? Water or tea? Right then. Aluwalia interview being tape recorded. It's now 10.38 on Tuesday the 9th of May, 1989. My name is Detective Sergeant Myers, also present in the room is Police Constable James O'Connell, observing. 
Mrs. Alawalia is aware that this interview is being conducted without a solicitor present. Mrs. Alawalia, there was a fire at your home last night. Your husband was very badly injured. Have you got any idea how the fire started? Mum, your husband has made a very serious allegation against you. Now, do you understand? Ma'am, would you like a translator present? Terminate an interview at 10.39 a.m. Outside. Now. Exactly which part of observing did I not make clear to you? With all due respect, sir, I thought it might be easier to get a confession if she actually knew what we were asking. How long have you been in uniform, Constable? Or three? Four months? Six. Oh, six! Well, that makes all the difference, doesn't it? I mean, with all that experience, I can see how you could think you could tell me how to do my job. Perhaps you'd be more comfortable with a Mill senior officer observing. Listen, mate, it's an act, all right? I've seen it hundreds of times with these people. They, they speak the Queen's English just as well as you please. Then they get into a spot of trouble with the law. All of a sudden, it's all this packy rubbish. Punjabi. You what? I believe she's Punjabi, Detective Sergeant. Oh, well, ain't you the clever one, huh? Listen, mate, I know these people think, all right? Now, you let me handle this my way. You follow my lead. I'll tell you what. I'll put a good word in with the commander for you. Now, what'd you say? Good lad. Resuming Alawalia interrogation, May the 9th, 1989. The time is 10.42 a.m. Do you recognise any of these items? You should do, because all three photos were taken in your home. This is Alawalia. The fire, it wasn't an accident at all, was it? you a question. Fine. If you don't want to talk, I'll tell you what happened, shall I? You waited until he was asleep, and then you snuck into his room. He'd been drinking, so he didn't even notice the smell at first, until you threw that candle. Now, your fingerprints or on that petrol can. They're also on the bucket, so we know the hour and we know the what. What we don't know is the why. So come on, darling, help us out here, will ya? Why did you do it, eh? Kieran, it's okay. I know you're frightened, but no one here wants to hurt you. <laughs> we just need to know what really happened. Tell us what happened and you can go home to your children. Not exactly a confession. And not exactly a denial either. She's guilty. We all know she did it. But why did she do it? Who cares? Maybe she had a dodgy curry or something. That'll be enough of that, Sergeant. Show the lady to herself. Fireball, mum, touch his mouth. Fireball, mum, touch his mouth. Fireball, mum, touch his mouth. Asian mum, touch his mouth. Asian mum, touch his mouth. Hey, that's my copier. 
It used to be. It's the banks now. What? I'm really sorry about that. Jamila? I know, I know. Don't worry, I'm handling it. How are we supposed to make flyers without a copier? I could have my nephews draw them. Might save them from marking out my walls for a bit. Very funny. It's not a big deal, Radha. This couldn't have happened at the worst possible time. What do you mean? Look, I found our next case. Oh, you have, have you? Fresh off the boat from India and you're already finding us new cases. Shut up, Asha. Are you joking? I mean, we're here to handle the victims of violence, not the perpetrators. Yes, yeah, and how do you even know she was abused? Why else would you set your husband on fire? Because you ran out of charcoal? We can't take on every case that takes your fancy. I mean, we haven't got the resources. Besides, she already has legal aid. What happened to the facts? All right, you lot, out you get. I haven't got all day. OK. Speak up when I call your name. Adams, Sabrina. Hi. Alo, Walalalia, Kiranji. Bloody hell, that's a mouthful. Answer for fuck's sake. Yeah. Next time, louder. Blair Jacqueline. Right here, Gav. Back again. Love it here. Roberts Genina. Yes. This way, ladies. Come on, get a move on. Ladies, these are your prison handbooks. Everything you need to know are in these pages, so don't lose them. Wait over there. Alu, you, you're next. Empty your pockets, please. Take off your jewellery, please. Now your clothes, please. Come on, there are others waiting. Take off your clothes. What's the problem? 
problem. Ten years, Barrett. Never removed clothes, even in front of her husband. These are the rules. Okay, we'll do it one at a time. Trousers off first. Sweet home. Watch your step. Uh. All right. Watch your head. <laughs> I got ya. I got ya. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shut the door now. Uh. Deepak, menu kithe leke aayo? Hold on. Just hold on. One more minute. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Open. For us? For you. And now, baby. What are you waiting for? An invitation? Rise and shine. Another day in paradise. Hey. It's okay. Don't need to panic. Who? Oh. Your cellmate. My name's Ronnie. Didn't think you'd have this luxurious accommodation all to yourself, did you? You got a name? You want to tell me, or am I supposed to guess? Kieran. Oh, Kieran. You missed breakfast. I thought you might be peckish. Okay, then. Suit yourself. Wow! 
How did that happen? Merry Christmas, ladies. Oh. So, what did it cost us? Nothing. Uh, but it might add 15 pounds to your monthly bills. Oh, what? We could barely afford the old payment. Tea. That's the least you can do. Listen, they're serious this time. You're going to have to be much more careful. It's a miracle I was able to secure your lease on this place at all. I mean, banks aren't notoriously fond of non-profit making groups. It kind of goes against their belief system. Well, thank God you are a conveyancing solicitor and not a banker. Listen, tell me, guys, I mean, why'd you do it? Chasing one lost cause after another. I guess because a lost cause is better than no cause at all. You know, that's almost profound. Shut up, Manila. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Adewala, I'm Chris Jones, your legal aid solicitor. This is Miss Miriam Taylor. She's your barrister on this case. We picked some things up for you from your mother-in-law's. Let's get right down to it, shall we? You spoke to the police without a solicitor. That wasn't very clever, was it? I won't see my children. Yes. Uh, they're staying with your mother-in-law. You'll have to arrange that with her, I'm afraid. Uh, when I go home? Uh, Mrs. Alawalia, you're charged with attempted murder. Right now you're on remand, but if you're convicted, you may be here for a very long time. Why did you do it? I, uh, I was afraid. Of who? Your husband? Why? Mr. Jones, would you mind stepping outside for a moment? Yes, I think. Excuse me. did that to you that night many nights Mrs. Alawalia I'm deeply sympathetic but I have to be honest as your husband was asleep in bed when you set him on fire and you were in no imminent danger according to the law we cannot claim self-defense I'll do what I can. Starts at free. No, yell. Maria. Fritina. Sail with Lithia. You like? What are you wearing? <laughs> you shouldn't try and copy white girls. It don't look right. <laughs> but me now go and get changed. Now. Did you hear me? Now. Go on. I 
राजीव संदीप रोटी तैयार है हेलो You're done. Other people need to use the phone too. Who's on the phone, Grandma? No one. Cheti, you eat two hands and eat. This beef surprise. Beef? I know it. Don't worry, love. There ain't none in it. Surprised? Barbie finally got hungry. Food here is fantastic. Mm. Although I bet it's not as good as Bobby G's cooking, huh? <laughs> you come home, dinner. Oh, I will. But today, see, today is my treat for the new UX. Ladies and gentlemen, this next song is a dedication from our customer, Mr. Ravi Sharma, to his guest, Mr. and Mrs. Aluwalia. <laughs> man, you are unbelievable, yeah? Come on, man, ask your lovely lady for a dance. No, no, I, I, I can't dance. Come on. If she wants to, you can take her. No. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. seem to be getting on quite well. Nice man. Masakie. He certainly fancied you. Chaddu ji, o to eve tarif kariya si. The way you were flirting with him all night, I'm not surprised. Flirt? Ek dance hi te kitta. O vi twade kene to. Some water? Married Ravi. You obviously fancy him as well. Chichi, but you have a little Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I love you so much. I just can't stand to see you with anyone else. What a fucking hell, 
do you keep staring at? Sorry, I leap. You want to be a bit more careful, love? Like a bird like you, in a big old place like this, with no mates? You want to use your brain? Fucking think about who you're looking at! No girl tax. Sorry, everybody's got to pay. When I thought you'd need extra cake, Doreen. When did you last see your feet, anyway? Ain't none of your business, Ronnie. No, just saying, you know. If I had an arse half the size of yours, I'd hire it out forever. <laughs> Get a bit of money. <laughs> you think you're really clever, don't you? Only compared to some. Well, clever gal. What if I said I wanted your cake and all? Mm, I'd say you can have it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ronnie, not again. I'm starting to think you enjoy solitary. Oh, you know me so well. There you are. Thank you. Please take a seat. She'll be right with you. Sure. Hey. Namaste. I'm Radha Dalal. Have you heard of South Hall Black Sisters? This will tell you a little about us. You can keep it. We are a support group. We work with women. Women who have been beaten up and abused by their husbands. You speak Punjabi? No, but I understand it. I once had a Punjabi boyfriend. <laughs> Kiranjit, I really want to help you. How are they treating you in here? How do you feel? I... I feel... free. larger problem. I had been working with the prosecution towards a reduced plea of assault with minimum jail time. But now, Kiran, they're bringing a charge of murder against you. If you're convicted, it's a mandatory life sentence. Pule ko gur marak paya, avr tiyag har pakti laya, janam maran ki tras mitai, gur pure ki bhyant vadai. गुर प्रसाद और उत्कम बिगास अंधकार में प्या प्रगास जिन किया सो गुरते जानिया गुर कृपा ते मुग्ध मन मानिया सोनी लग रही है 
ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਤੱਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਣਨ ਦੀ ਕੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰਤ ਹੈ ਐ ਲੰਦਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੇਰੇ ਤੇਵਰ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਅੱਛਾ ਦੋਸਤ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਤੇਰਾ ਚੰਗਾ ਖਿਆਲ ਰੱਖੇਗਾ ਪਰ ਦੀਦੀ ਮੇਰੀ ਪੜਾਈ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਰੋਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਤਰਾਜ਼ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ It's a copy of my pathology report in regards to the deceased Deepak Alawalia. Could you tell the court what you found? <clears throat> There were trace elements of other chemicals and oils mixed in with the petrol that was poured over the victim. Caustic soda. It caused a reaction similar to that of napalm. In what way? It causes the liquid to stick to the victim's flesh and keep burning for a longer period of time. In effect, it cooked the flesh right off his bones. Thank you, doctor. Your honor, with your permission, I'd like to introduce exhibit A to the court. Granted. Alawalia, you've been called. Mrs. Alawalia, how would you describe your daughter-in-law? She very arrogant. Always order Deepak around. The defense has made statements that your son assaulted the defendant on many occasions. Did you ever witness any of these alleged attacks? Agar tel theek garam na hoye, to pakoda baaro jal janda hai te andaro kachcha reh janda hai. Ji. कोई मुश्किल नहीं कॉल मी वर्क दीपक तू इतनी की कर रहा है कॉल मी वर्क एंड एम्बैरस द फक आउट ऑफ मी तू सी अपनी बेइज्जती आप करा दियो चुप कुत्ती पाजी पाजी जी डू इट कोई ना जाने ओ दी यार ने कार फोन करके धमकियां दी थी यू लीव माय मदर आउट पाजी लीव हर आउट No, I see nothing. Mom, didn't your son move into your house leaving the defendant and their two small children for a brief time early this year? But she drive him away. Right. because she was arrogant demanding even correct she treat deepak like a servant my lord defense has submitted a copy of a letter exhibit c written by kira to her husband when he left this past march the original is in punjabi but it's been translated verbatim into english for the exhibit would you please read the highlighted portion no english no good Allow me. Deepak, if you come back, I promise you, I will do whatever you say. I won't drink black coffee, I won't watch television. The children need you. Please come home. Mrs. Alawalia, do these sound like the words of an arrogant woman? How are you feeling about your testimony, Alfred? Yeah, I think so. Good. I mean, there's a bit of a problem. Well, not so much of a problem, more of a uh, difference of opinion, I suppose. About what? Well, it seems the defence are claiming that their client was dazed and incoherent when she was arrested. She didn't know what was going on, so she went away of her rights. Blah 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 blah. Lad, well, lawyer, double talk if you ask me. So what's that got to do with me? Well, I want you in your testimony. It's confirmed that the accused was both lucid and coherent when you found her in the house. 
I don't know about that, sir. Oh, I think you do. And that bitch murdered a man. And I'll be damned if I let her get away with some bullshit incompetence defence. And if you know what's good for you, leave it with you. PC James O'Connell, it's your turn. Constable, you were the first on the scene on the night in question, correct? Yes, ma'am. How would you describe the defendant's demeanor when you first encountered her in the backyard? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. I'll ask again. When you first encountered Mrs. Alawalia that night, would you describe her demeanor as alert and attentive, or perhaps dazed and incoherent? She seemed lucid and aware of her surroundings, Mum. What? He's lying. Might as well drag her to the streets and hang up for the love. Don't just stand please. Oh, God. That will be all, Constable. Dr. Stillman, where do you currently practice medicine? I currently have my own practice in Green Park. And previously? Two years at the Hounslow Accident and Emergency Centre. Do you recognize the defendant? I do. Okay, good. Now try rotating from the shoulder. It's okay, I'm just gonna check your side. Okay, well, the good news is nothing's broken, but you are going to have to wear a wrap on your wrist and abdomen for several weeks, however. You say this happened in a fall? Yes. Our son always leaves his toys at the top of the stairs. I keep telling him to put them away, but... Kids. I understand. Mr. Alawalia, I was wondering if you might wait outside while I tend to your wife. Is that really necessary? Well, there's still some paperwork to be taken care of, and I thought it might be faster for you if you sorted it now while I tend to this. We've got to pick up my son from my mother's. Look, I really think it would be best if I could just Thank have you a look. Help. Mrs. Alawalia, is there anything you want to tell me? No. Doctor, do you still believe the defendant was an abused woman? Yes, I do. Thank you. No further questions. You have to. Kieran. My English not good. Your love. No one is going to laugh at you. The court will get you an interpreter. Look. I'm running out of options. At this point, our best hope is to put you on the stand and hope that the women in the jury are sympathetic to you. I cannot. It is too shame. What? Shame? Too shameful? Is that it? You're ashamed. Deepak was the one who should have been ashamed, not you. It is not your fault. Counsel for the defense, have you any other witnesses? Defense rests, Your Honor. Very well. Members of the jury, you may now retire to consider all the evidence in the case. You've heard statements that the victim, Deepak Alawalia, did on occasion inflict bodily injury on the defendant, his wife. However, it would appear that none of those injuries was of the highest severity. Oh, what? Rubbish! Silence! Any more of this and I will have the gallery cleared. The fact that the most recent incident took place a full two hours before she poured or threw petrol over the deceased and then ignited it with a naked flame, this alone is reason not to consider either a plea of self-defense or provocation. If you cannot reach a unanimous decision, I will accept a majority verdict. 
Court will now adjourn while the jury deliberates. It might not be today. They could be in there for days. It could still go either way. It not matter. What? Why do you say that? I sinned. I must be. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, my lord. Defendant will rise. Did the jury find the defendant guilty or not guilty on one count of murder? Guilty. Order! Order in the gallery or I will charge you with contempt. This is disgusting. Yes. Silence! Kiranjit Aluwalia, you have been found guilty of murder. I hereby sentence you to life imprisonment. Court is adjourned. All right. I'm... I'm sorry. Stay here a bit this time. Getting tired of shuttling you around. Come on, you know you love me. You told me you love me. Give us a kiss. It's not polite to stare. Why? Why what? Why help me? I nobody to you. Oh. Guess I've just always hated a bully. in the playtime. Enforced, one hour. <laughs> hey, ladies! Woo! Good morning! Oh, bugger. Will you look at this, then? Hi, lovely to see you. Girl, use one crazy white woman. I hope you practice sleeping with one eye open, all that downtime in solitary. Doreen's just waiting to see you. You're gonna be dying. I'm gonna sweat the small stuff. Come on, give us a bag. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Kira, these are my friends, my um, sisters in Her Majesty's Resort. We have Jackie. We've met. We took the ride together. Wasn't exactly at my best, I'm afraid. And this is the, the lovely Lula. Now, Lula works in the canteen, so next time you want something special, you just ask her and she'll get it for you. Vegetarian, right? 
Don't worry, I'll take care of you. Put some meat on that skinny little frame. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, and leastly, we have Gladys. Screw you too, Ronnie. Gladys works in the laundry. She's a good, clean girl, and we love her for her warm disposition. Why are you here? Ah, uh, sorry. I leave. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't be so sensitive. She means, what did you do to get in here? Because, well, no offence, you don't look the criminal type. <laughs> More like a swimsuit model. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? I thought it was obvious. I have a bit of a substance abuse problem. Nicked a neighbour's telly, bought some crystal meth. Well, I didn't think he'd miss it. Cheap bastard, didn't even have a video. <laughs> <laughs> and you? Ronnie's a celebrity. She stabbed her husband. Bye. He snored. It's <laughs> <laughs> a joke. <laughs> no, I told him. If he raised his hand to me again, it would be his last time. I guess he doubted my sincerity. <laughs> I'll say. And you not sorry? No. Only that I didn't do it ages ago. Don't even ask about Gladys. Gladys doesn't like to talk about her life before my Woodhull. It's bad luck, I think. Just because I don't want to wash my dirty linen in public like everyone else. But you've got no problem doing that, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? You sound much better. Sleep better now. Getting used to new place. Right. Listen, the reason I wanted to talk, the judges handed down your tariff. You'll be eligible for parole in 12 years. Kieran, are you there? So long. The last six months of your remand will count towards it. See my sons so long. I'm so sorry. I was there every day of your trial. I was so upset with the way everything went. Why come see me now? To help you with your appeal, Kiran. I already have lawyer. Yeah. And what a great job she's done for you. Has she begun working on your appeal? Has she spoken to anyone? Tell me, Kiran, has she even come to see you since you were sentenced? I thought not. Time's running out for your leave of appeal. We'll find you a better lawyer, someone who can actually do something for you. Kiran, let us help you. You really want to help me? Yes. Bring me my children. Please. No. She's their mother. I know who she is. She's the bitch that killed my son. Don't come here again. Oh, please, my... You know, she slammed the door on me so fast, I almost lost a toe. Well, I guess there's nothing more we can do. What are you saying? We should just abandon her? We should just let her rot? Hey, come on. It's a moot point anyway. I mean, the mother-in-law's not going to let you within a yard of those children, so... Well, not without a court order. You are bloody brilliant! Not so quick. Here, read this. Do you look here? It's a court order. It instructs you to deliver the boys to me so that I can take them to visit their mother in jail. Or my nakawa. Then they will be visiting you in jail as well. Thank <laughs> you.
Good boys. I have an appointment to meet her lawyer tomorrow. Don't believe it. Mm -hmm. How on earth did you get the dragon lady to back down? With this court order. What? But this is an old one from another case. Yes. I remember dragon lady had trouble reading English in court. So I took a chance. You are evil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Mail call. Emmaus, Carla. Brighton, Amanda. Scott, Veronica. Yes! yes. Look at her. Like the cat got the cream. Who from? Her daughter, I reckon. She's 14. Ronnie just loves her to death. Tucked away up north at some boarding school until Ronnie gets her appeal sorted. Children bring joy to any life. What can I do for you? I'm with Southwell Black Sisters. I guess Kiranji Taluale would have told you that I'd be stopping by. Right. So what can I do for you, Mrs... Ms. Dalal. Well, you can call me Radha. As you can see from the condition of my desk, I'm not really in a position to discuss... Is that what you're going to tell Kiran when she asks you why you missed the cut-off date for her appeal? She has only two more days to submit grounds. Or her sentence stands. And you are saying that you don't seem prepared? Ms. Dalal... Let me be frank with you. I know of your group and the work you do. I find a lot of it to be quite commendable. I couldn't do your job. By that same turn, I also wouldn't walk into your office and tell you how to do it. I have been up for weeks, sometimes all night, looking for something, anything, on which to challenge this conviction. I may not be one of those stuffed shirts on Chancery Lane, billing 500 pounds an hour and swilling brandy at the club, but I know the law. And the honest truth is, the verdict was accurate as a matter of law. I'm sorry. I feel for her too. But there is just nothing else to be done. I suppose then, we'll have to look just a little harder. Yeah, I'll go to... 
were asleep. Deepak! Deepak! I married to Deepak. Not one night after this. He beat me. Sleep with other women. I was born in the village of Chak Kalal, in Punjab. I was the youngest of nine children and the most loved. My father died when I was only a few months old. My mother died of cancer when I was 16. She wanted me to become lawyer. So, why didn't you? My husband not did not allow. It's a free country, Karen. You can be whatever you want to be. But my family say get married, have children. A proper Indian woman. Rainbow. Triple score. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sounds like my family. If I'd listened to them, I'd have been a housewife in Birmingham. But you would not be here. There's something worse than prison. Big word, shoulder. Big word, wrong word. Shoulder? It, yeah, nearly. It needs, uh, here, one of these. Shoulder. You? Yeah. I need you. Yeah, you need me. Don't worry, getting better. Connie was fascinated. Fascinated. F fascinated. It was becoming unbearable. 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 She had only one desire now. Her having boss so soms. What? Having boss soms. Heaving. Heaving. <gasps> boss. What means? Heaving. <laughs> Next. 
आलू वाली नेक्स्ट एक ही है I need sixty pound for the phone bill. Sixty pound? Why? So much? Well, you're the one who's always on the phone to your brothers in India. A black shirt in there. मैं करता करता किस तरह चलाऊंगी? You should get them to send you the money. तो इसे कितने जा रहे हो? I'm going to meet some mates from work. I'll be back in a bit. मैं पता है कि तुसी किन्नु में लंच जा रहे हो थानू शर्म आनी चाहिए मेरे डैड विच टॉडा बच्चा है गेट आउट ऑफ द वे आई सेड मूव आई वाज माय फॉल Why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep biting me up? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the children love their books. It was very thoughtful of you. Thank you. Wow, Kiran, your English has really improved. <laughs> It is all thanks to Ronnie. I really wanted you to meet her. So what's the situation with Karen's appeal now? Our solicitor barely made the deadline. It's now over a year and we are still waiting for the hearing date. We got a barrister to argue in court. Well, that's our biggest challenge. Who will work for no money? Lord Foster's office. Yes, please hold. I said no interruptions. I'm sorry, sir, but your sister's on line three. Them your boys? <laughs> They're beautiful. You have children? Two, girls. You miss them? Every bloody day. You're behind. Now there's two more loads coming up from Three Bock. Get a bloody move on. Do you have any idea what this is about? No, I didn't know two hours ago. I didn't know on the way over here, and I certainly don't know now. There's no need for an attitude. I was just asking. Nice necklace. Nice day. Lord Foster will see you now. Come in. Hello. How do you do? How do you do? Be seated, please. Can I offer you something? Tea, coffee? No, no, thank you. Um, I'd love some tea with milk, please. Yeah. Two teas with milk, please, Glenda. Well, thank you both for coming. <clears throat> I'm well aware that time is of the essence in this case. So I feel it would be in everybody's interests if you were to continue, Mr. Gupta, as solicitor for the proceedings. Uh, pardon? Obviously, you would have full access to our law library and whatever staff you might require. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Foster. Uh, we're a bit confused. About what? Well, about what we are doing here. Oh, I do apologise. I, I assumed you'd been told. I'm to be Queen's counsel for Mrs. Alawalia for her appeal. What? But why would you uh, take? Uh, Mr. Foster, you are aware that we have absolutely no funds to pay for your services. Uh, nor do I ask for any. I shall be doing this strictly pro bono as a favour. To whom? To my sister Veronica Scott. She's acquainted with your client at Marwood Hall. Indeed, I believe they're cellmates. 
You... you are her brother? To be perfectly honest, I was surprised to get her call. We have a tumultuous relationship at best. She wouldn't even let me help her with her own legal woes. She must consider Mrs. Alawalia to be a very good friend. Hey. What? You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, having trouble breathing now. What's the matter? Can't you read English? Can't you? This isn't some stupid old advert. It's a woman's life. No bells means no bells. So sorry, officer. We'll remove them. So you do, right? Are you crazy? We're not going to remove them. What? <laughs> I don't believe this. Luna, what is happening? It's Gladys. Come on. You didn't think we found out, did you, Gladys? That's right. I found out what you did. It's your fucking problem, Doreen. Leave her alone. Oh, look, lad. Here come your mates. What do you reckon? Should we tell them? Do you think they'll still let you hang round with them when they know what you've done? What are you talking about? I overheard the guards talking. Seems how Gladys is doing 12 years for killing her kids. That's right. She's a fucking filthy child killer. No wonder you wanted to keep it quiet. Well, now you're going to get what's coming to you. No! What you want about no? Piss off, love, before I beat you too! Leave her alone. You're telling me you're willing to take a beating for this piece of shit? Why? She's a friend. And I do not like bullies. <laughs> she don't like bullies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's all this? No one told me we were having a social. God, oh, I feel really left out, don't you? You're gonna have to get by me too, Doreen. And me. Still fancy having a go. Whatever. And you, I know I said stand up for yourself sometime, but pick on someone smaller next time, eh? <sighs> You're all right, love. It was an accident. I was doing a lot of drinking. And one night, I was making supper and I fell asleep. I, I must have left the tea towel on the cooker and it, and it caught fire. My girls were upstairs. A neighbour dragged me out, but he couldn't get upstairs. Flames. He was screaming. <laughs> My babies were screaming. <laughs> Leave me alone. I cannot. Why? 
you'd agreed. Karthi girl, sharam aandi hai. I cannot be so naked before the world. I understand, Kiran, but people need to hear your story in your own words. My English is still not very good. So write it in Punjabi. I will have it translated. I don't know how, what to say. Say it just the way you told me. It'll also help other women. Come on. The hall has been booked. We've mailed out the leaflets. This rally is our best chance to get public support. Is your reputation more important than your freedom? At least think of your children. My culture is like my blood. Flowing through every vein of my body. It is the culture in which I was born, which sees the woman as the honor of the house. In order to uphold this false honor, Isar, she's taught to endure many kinds of oppression and pain in silence. A woman is a toy, a plaything, broken at will, stuck together at will. For 10 years, I lived a life of beatings and degradation, and no one noticed. I came out of my husband's jail and entered the jail of the law. It is here, at last, that I have found a kind of freedom. So proud of you. James O'Connell. Who are you? Anil Gupta. I'm the solicitor for Kiran Alawalia. Do you want one? Uh, not for me, thanks. What do you want? I, uh, I saw you at the rally. Look, I'm not going to beat about the bush. We're going before the High Court to appeal Kieran's conviction, and I need your help. What are our chances? To be honest, remote. Pretty girl. Your wife? Fiancé. Former. Oh, I'm sorry. She saw through me. I was never much of a drinker before, but... Sarah used to joke that I was the world's worst Irishman. But then after the case, she knew something had changed. Didn't know what exactly. She could just tell that something was eating me up inside. Um, in the original trial, you testified that after the fire, Kieran was... Uh lucid and aware of her surroundings. Is that correct? But I lied. In court. She wasn't lucid. She was hardly aware we were even there. All I had to do was say what happened. But I put my career in front of the truth. They say confession's good for the soul. 
think that's true. I believe it's never too late to make amends. I think Doreen might change her mind about you if she sees that outfit. Oh, she's a bit hairy for me, love. Van's here, Scott. Let's go. Thank you, all right? Hey, if I don't get the appeal, I might at least get a date. I hope it's going to be worth the money we've paid him. It will be. Okay. Just let me do the talking, all right? OK. I've looked over the material you sent me. And what do you think? You're not going to like it. Her statement is completely self-justificatory. She did it, she admits doing it. Why should she be treated differently to any other murderer? But that's ridiculous. You know uh, that she... Surely there's something we could use. Well, there might be one thing. Follow up on the prison psychiatrist's report. He saw her shortly after the incident, just before the trial, and he mentions endogenous depression. Do you mean we have to say she's crazy? Right, thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. What kind of a world is this? Where a woman has to lose her marbles to get justice and a man just has to lose his temper? Um, I'm so sorry, Doctor. Thank you again. We are leaving. Ronnie, look. He will not believe the number of letters. What is wrong? Oh, you know me. I always get myself worked up over something. Your appeal? My lawyer said it might be a long shot, but I guess I just got my hopes up a bit too high. I don't know what I'm going to tell her. They're calling her a killer's kid. And she's been in two. No, three fights because of me. So what kind of a mother does that make me? In your average? <laughs> when did you get a sense of fever? The day I met you. Kieran's lawyer tried provocation as defence. Because it doesn't apply in her case. I mean, yes, Deepak did attack her on the night in question, but the murder took place a full two hours later. So? Well, so, the law considers that to be a cooling down period. Basically, what they're saying is, is that Kieran had time to calm down and think rationally, therefore no provocation, so it's not manslaughter, it's murder. But she was emotionally, physically and sexually abused for ten years. One night, she snapped. So instead of cooling down, she, she boiled over. Is that so difficult to fathom? That is bloody brilliant. What? We can use that as the basis for the appeal. Really? In his summation to the jury, the, the judge failed to mention Kieran's history of abuse, of her status as a battered woman. I mean, that amounts to misdirection of the jury. So what are you saying? We have a chance? Yeah. A, a small one, but, but a chance. Here it is, Ronnie. Last time I saw her, she was over by the toilets. Why? I have not seen her all day. Ronnie? a lot of determination to do that sort of damage to the plastic blade. She's very lucky you found her when you did. She will be okay. She'll be confined to the ward until she recovers under suicide watch, but yes, she'll live.
Nice work, Alawalia. You've saved me a mountain of paperwork. I do not know if this is a good idea. Trust us, it is. You're a different person now, Kieran. You deserve a new look. Go for it. today. Where's the money, Kieran? Tell me what you did with that. I spent it. That money was mine, you bitch. You had no right. Food for your sons. तो सीधे कोरी रंडिया तक खर्च कर देते हैं। What if I fucked up that pretty face you're so proud of? Then you'd learn. This is my house. It's my money. If I want to spend it on other women, I will. If I want to poke out those pretty eyes, I'll do that too. Gonna stop me? Hmm? You? <laughs> You're a woman. You're nothing. You're a cunt. Less than nothing.
All rise. Counsel, are you ready to present your case? We are, my lord. Proceed. My lords, we come here today before you to present the appeal on behalf of our client, Kiranjit Alawalia, and her conviction for murder, which was handed down by the court on the 7th of December, 1989. It is our belief, my lords, that this conviction was handed down in error, and as such, we seek appeal for a new trial. We note that you are presenting grounds for your appeal. My lords, we seek appeal on three grounds. My first and second submissions relate to the learned judge's direction to the jury on provocation. The classic definition of provocation is that which was approved by this court in Regina versus Duffy. I quote, provocation is some act or series of acts which would cause in any reasonable person a sudden and temporary loss of self-control, rendering the accused so subject to passion as to make him or her, for the moment, not master of his or her own mind. My Lord, I believe the learned judge in the present case repeated those very words almost verbatim to the jury in his summing up. Indeed, my lord, that is true. However, it's my belief that the Duffy direction followed by the judge was, to put it bluntly, incorrect. Tread softly, counsel. Beg pardon, my lord. No disrespect intended. However, in his summation to the jury, his lordship remarked that due to the two-hour cooling-off period between the assault of my client at the hands of the deceased and the subsequent crime for which she was charged, no plea or provocation could be considered. And yet, my lords, the Homicide Act of 1957 reads, where there is evidence on which the jury can find the defendant was provoked to lose his self-control, the question of whether it was enough to make a reasonable person do as they did shall be left to the jury. It could be argued, my lord, that the learned judge did not consider setting fire to a man who slept, the actions of a reasonable person. Reasonable, my lord, to whom? To you, to me, to a woman who suffered violence and abuse and humiliation of the highest order for 10 years, who feared not only for her own life, but for the lives of her little children. I myself could not, would not, presume to know what reasonable would be for such a woman. My second submission, my lords, concerns the way the learned judge dealt with the question of the appellant's list of characteristics. I submit, my lords, that this woman was suffering from battered woman's syndrome and that her ill treatment so affected her personality as to lead her to a state of learnt helplessness, a phrase used by those who have recognised this condition. You believe the judge should have added this condition to the list? Or, at the very least, my lord, left the list open so that the jury might have considered it for themselves. Finally, my third submission deals with the grounds of diminished responsibility, my lords. We submit the sworn statement of Police Constable James O'Connell, stating that the appellant was neither lucid nor aware of her surroundings when he interviewed her immediately after the incident in question. Also, my lord, we have psychiatric reports, most obtained recently, but they express the opinion that at the time of the killing, the appellant's mental responsibility for her actions was indeed diminished within the meaning of the Homicide Act of 1957. My lords, my client has suffered two great injustices. First, by the man who promised to love and honour her in marriage, and second, by our system of justice. It is tragically too late to correct the first. But by granting our appeal, you help us on the first step towards rectifying the second.
We will consider the issues overnight. Court is adjourned until 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. One more, please. Hey, hey, come on. You've had enough. So, what are we drinking to, Mr. Solicitor? To victory tomorrow? Or to one of my lost causes? Don't be so hard on yourself, eh? Why do you take it so personally? Because it is personal. What? My sister. How could I be so blind? You know, every time I would see her bruises, she would tell me the story about walking into furniture in her sleep. And I actually believed it. Why would she protect that stupid bastard? Do you know he used to beat her black and blue for six long years? And I didn't even know it. And then one day, she just... She just killed herself. And, and I could do nothing. I couldn't, I, I couldn't save her. Well, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know. The sisters. Two sisters. This is a tragic case that has aroused much public attention. Three grounds of appeal have been raised. The first two relate to the learned judge's directions to the jury on provocation. In our judgment, the summing up of the learned judge was correct in law. Turning to the third ground of appeal, diminished responsibility, we consider the appellant is on stronger ground. We have before us a report, which was available before trial, in which a doctor expresses the opinion that the appellant was suffering from endogenous depression at the material time. It is unclear how such potentially important material came to be overlooked. In these circumstances, we consider the verdict to be unsafe. And as such, we consider the proper course here is to order a retrial. never was a retrial, of course. The courts could never find a woman who'd burned her husband to death to be innocent. So on September 25th, 1992, they reduced her sentence to manslaughter and accepted the three years, four months that she had spent in jail as the full term. from you. Kelsey. Thank you for all this. In life, there is no honor in silent suffering. There is no affection, no comfort to be found in love that is abused. It is our responsibility as mothers to raise our sons to treat women with love 
and respect not violence and anger only then will the suffering end my story is a part of the picture i may not be important but but this issue is please do not forget that there are many women who need help from you Most people can't imagine what it's like to spend years of your life locked away in a place like this. But for Kiran, Mulwood Hall was never really a prison. It was her first step towards freedom. Raji, put your bottoms on. 